I wanted to um, say a word about meditation. Uh, and there are many kinds of meditations. One of the things that's really helpful is to have a, a, a some sense that's authentic. It has to be authentic. Some quality of well-being of some kind, including in a sense of like a core or layer of peacefulness or well-being in yourself, let alone feelings of things like gratitude or contentment or love that are quite emotionally positive. And the reason that those actually help us meditate uh, is that they uh, motivate us to practice, they kind of keep distracting, quote unquote, negative emotions, stresses sort of at bay. It's a little bit like flowers crowding out weeds. Neurologically, the dopamine that increases as we have these rewarding experiences, including fairly subtle or quite peaceful ones, like the just what feels so good about tranquility or oh, relief or reassurance. As those dopamine levels rise, they stabilize whatever we're holding in awareness at the time, which could be a sense of beingness continuously. And in effect, as dopamine levels rise, that keeps a kind of gate closed in the substrates of working memory and the outer upper frontal regions of your brain. And as that gate closes or stays closed, distractions are kept out. So operationally, we're more able to steady the mind when we feel rested in various authentic qualities of well-being. This is not clinging to positive experiences, craving them or chasing them. There's, this, there's an art uh, that I tried to speak to in which there's an invitation, uh, a, a kind of may it arise or an evoking that's, that's really quite gentle or a turning toward a welcoming of these qualities and then, then helping of them to stick around so that they in effect become um, more and more of the object of attention. There really is a place for that. It serves neurologically, it serves the embodied basis of meditation and steadiness of mind. And also in our sensitive receptive state when we're meditating, if we're marinating in peace, contentment and love, we are increasingly hardwiring those qualities into our own nervous system. So we are developing trait peacefulness, trait contentment, trait love, and other related qualities, such as you know, trait um, gratitude, uh, or the sense of just awe or delight in the moment as it is, as other aspects of you know, contentment or satisfaction generally. We're reinforcing them. Why not? You know, the, as it said, traditionally, the mind takes its shape from what it rests upon, for better or worse. Uh, do you want to rest your mind on stresses and worries, fussing and feuding, right? Or do you want to rest your mind on more of a sense of, you know, peace, contentment and love, right? It's up to us in a sense. And um, so uh, it's also true that traditionally, feelings of happiness, which are kind of on a spectrum that run from joy and happiness to contentment to tranquility. And feelings of bliss are traditionally recommended as factors of steadiness of mind and factors of awakening um, altogether in the, in the Buddhist tradition. So these are practitioners from 2,500 years ago who are very prepared to be very hardcore. <laughs> You know, they probably didn't have a bed of nails back then, but they were prepared to lie on it if it would bring them to enlightenment, right? And they valued, they valued these intense experiences um, of happiness and bliss. So uh, if they valued them, we're allowed to value them ourselves. And many, I've known many meditators who kind of mm, push them away when in fact it would really help their meditative practice to open to them and receive them into themselves. Okay. So I'd like to uh, speak here about um, loss and gain and then open it up for discussion with everyone. Uh, it, um, let me just move a little window here. Very good, okay, great. So 
Um, in Tibet, it is said that there are eight worldly winds, pleasure and pain, gain and loss, and depending on how it's translated, praise and blame, and fame and ill repute, or scandal, uh, shame. And uh, it's interesting first that half of those worldly winds have to do with our social life, our relationships, because that is a major area of you know, ebbing and flowing, rising and falling, the vicissitudes of life. I wanna focus here on um, loss and gain. And I wanna begin by talking about yesterday. Uh, yesterday, our son, who's been living with us for a couple of years, very convenient for him, it's wonderful for his parents. He's used his bedroom as a kind of launch pad for traveling a lot as a, as a semi-professional dancer amidst uh, other things that he does. And uh, yesterday, we, he moved to an apartment nearby. And that's a, normally that would be a kind of a minor loss amidst the gains for him in living more independently, being able to kind of do whatever he wants to do in the kitchen, whatnot, at any time of day or night. But because of this pandemic, it could well be many, many, many months before I hug my son again. And it just got me. It got me. I would see pictures of him. I can kind of feel it in my body now, even as I talk about it, little pictures of him when he was about 10 and you know, we were in Yosemite and he's, we're goofing around, he's looking up at me. I've got a t-shirt that says Carpe Diem on it, seize the day, you know? And man, I would just see that picture and oh, I start to cry basically. It's a loss. And that loss, which is very poignant for me, is a small loss compared to the many, many losses that people have already experienced at this time or experienced at other times in life or will experience in the months and maybe even a year or two ahead. Loss. Loss is real. Loss of so many things. Loss of money, loss of financial security, loss of opportunities to work in familiar ways, um, loss of a kind of ease in living that's been crowded out by a fair amount often of hassle and new tasks and things you got to pay attention to. And where do I get my groceries now? And what, um, you know, so many losses, separations from those we care about. Uh, I was going to see my aunt in Colorado in a month or so, an elderly woman. That's not going to happen. It's not safe for her. It's not safe for me to travel. Uh, so many losses. People, um, as we be here today, um, people are dying around the world um, as we practice together. Those are losses too. And so loss. Loss is an important and inherent part of life. There's, there's no escaping loss. Uh, I think uh, there's a, there are these five reflections coming out of Tibetan Buddhism. A way of saying them or translating them is, is it given to me to escape aging? Is it given to me to escape illness? Is it given to me to escape dying? Is it given to me to escape being separated one way or another from everything I love someday? And is it given to me to escape the results of my actions? It is, I think each of us has to find their own sincere answer to that question, but I don't think it is given to us to escape old age, disease and death and the loss of so much of what we count upon. One of the things that's been very striking to me about this time is the ways in which I think for many, many people, in some ways me included, it's a real wake up call to realize the degree to which we've been propped up unknowingly, just habitually. We take it for, by all we take for granted, the activities we take for granted, the settings, the events, the circumstances, the interactions with others, the flow of experiences that these conditions foster, taken for granted. And then when there's a major disruptor, like so many of us are living through right now, whew, the things that have propped us up 
including a familiar stream of certain kinds of experiences, are no longer available. They're no longer reliable. And we are left then with what we have grown inside ourselves, what we have cultivated or developed inside our own heart, our, our personal character, our qualities, our skills, our mood, um, the general atmosphere or wallpaper of our own mind, our insight, the stability of our own practice, our depth of practice, uh, the inner resources we have with us when everything else, as Pema Chodron puts it, falls apart and disappears essentially beneath our feet as a loss. And for, I think, many people, when they look internally to see what they've got that they can actually count upon these days, it's a fairly empty cupboard. And it's a real prompt to look for ways during this time and in general to fill your inner cupboard of resources of various kinds. So, losses, real losses, right? And I think there's a place for honoring and having dignity in the losses. I was really startled by how upset I was running up to our son leaving home. Oh, he came over today to, uh, you know, pick up some food that he had left behind and some other things and a cable for his internet and just watching him out there on the street, 10 feet away, uh, you know, cause we're practicing social distancing, uh, his mom and I, the loss, right? It's real. And also there is gain. There is the gain of new things we are learning, including maybe the gain of a wake up call it says, row, row. <laughs> you know, on the other side of this, I need to pay a little more attention to what I've cultivated in my relationships that I can really count upon. Who can I really count on these days? Who is really showing up for me these days? Row, row, what I need to develop inside myself. Those are gains. Uh, we're learning new skills. Um, there's the gain of more time with loved ones. Although sometimes that could kind of wear a little thin as the hours and weeks tick by uh, sheltering in place together but there are gains of different kinds in our, in our situation. And then there are also, frankly, in a general sense, the kind of gains that we can experience as we simply observe what's true. It's true that we can be together here remarkably. Wow. It's true that as I looked out my window earlier today, I got to watch some a squirrel being really clever, uh, wrapping its arms around or something, the bird feeder to get the food and then falling off the bird feeder, it slipped and lost its grip and it landed in a bush underneath it and thrashed around a little bit. I mean, sorry, squirrel, but for me, it was pretty entertaining to kind of watch that, right? Or just the gain of the next breath. I mean, not being morbid about it, but eventually there will be the last breath. And in the context of that one, boy, isn't this breath a gain? Doesn't it feel really sweet? So there are the gains of new things that arise even in difficult conditions. And then there's the gain that's available to us really at any time. And in a time of losses, it's really important to allow oneself to feel the losses mindfully as I allowed myself to feel it with our son while not getting hijacked by those losses and and feeding them and getting caught up in them. And that's a fine art to feel it without getting stuck to it and then still feeling the next wave as it comes through. So there's a quality of spaciousness, of awareness that I was emphasizing in the meditation um, of beingness <sighs> through which the waves of life flow. That's an important way to practice with loss. Meanwhile, it's particularly important to look for the gains in a healthy sense, to take an extra beat or minute, as I've been doing more and more with my wife and thinking and saying to her really basically, if I'm gonna be stuck sheltering in place, I'd rather it be you than anyone else you know, in the world, right? Like to feel that and to appreciate that, to turn toward that. 
to have a sense of your own good heart, one's own good heart, the, the gain of that, like, wow, in the middle of all this, a lot of stuff is kind of frustrating, angering, exasperating, irksome. Oh, there's practice in your heart that you, you can appreciate that, right? Um, appreciating the simplicity of food. Uh, I am thinking of a corn chip I ate earlier today. It's good. Thank you, corn. Thank you, chips. <laughs> you know? These are gains too. And it's really important to look for them, appreciate them, don't cling to them, but take in the good of them. More important than ever. And in the internalization for that extra breath or so, staying with that experience, keeping those neurons firing together so they wire together, in the internalization of what we are beneficially experiencing, then we can really help ourselves gain from it in ways that are beneficial and wholesome as we cultivate these qualities increasingly inside ourselves turning to gains and opportunities to gain and to fill ourselves up. Not in a possessive sense. I don't mean gain in that way. I don't mean it, you know, clinging. There's a useful saying in Zen, particularly applied to meditation, no gaining mind where we disengage from the machinery of goal seeking. There's, there's totally a place for that. Totally a place for that. Um, and one of the things that promotes and supports genuinely sustained no gaining mind is the internalization, which is a cultivation, a kind of gain of wholesome beneficial experiences. Then we feel increasingly full already. So the machinery of grasping falls away and it's a lot easier to sustain no gaining mind as a result. And then, as I said earlier, there is what is underneath it all that can never be lost. In other words, Awareness is ongoing. There's even a kind of awareness while we sleep. If you're suddenly awoken, you can be aware of what you were previously momentarily aware of the, the previous few seconds. There's, there's some sense there. So there's awareness there. And certainly while we're awake, there's a continuity of awareness. Without getting mystical or transcendental about it yet, but just in ordinary reality, whether it's a squirrel or a human, there's a continuity of awareness as the ground or basis of passing experiences. We can rest there and we cannot lose that. We can have more of a sense of a kind of spaciousness or vastness as a quality of the streaming of consciousness. Right? We can have a sense of that vastness and spaciousness as inherent in experience. You know, the Buddha was interested, as you may have heard me say, in content. He was interested in what we're experiencing, particularly as it aided um, happiness rather than suffering, welfare rather than harm. He was interested in what we're experiencing, but he was primarily interested in the nature of what we're experiencing, transient, impermanent made of parts, arising and passing away, empty of substance, right? The fundamental nature of, of consciousness. Um, and we can feel, as in the meditation we did earlier or at any time in life, that fundamental vastness and spaciousness, which may also have qualities of stillness, without edges, thus boundless. We cannot ever lose that. Right? And we can gain a sense of it, we can find the sense of it, but it's not like we are creating um, the, the nature of consciousness, the nature of experiences, the nature of the mind. We're just finding it. And similarly, deep down inside, when we're not rattled, when we're not disturbed, from our resting state, when we don't have a, a sense, an invasive sense of things that are missing, we become aware as well of what we cannot lose, an inherent peacefulness, an inherent contentment, and an inherent love that's in our nature. That's a deep, 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 deep refuge. 
we also may feel that um, even if we can't see people or talk with them who care about us, we cannot lose all the good that has ever been between us. Um, even though our son has moved out and I can't hug him today uh, or get a hug from him, um, I cannot lose all the good times we've had. They will never not have been, right? And those in our lives today who we know have good will for us. We might bug them sometimes, they might bug us sometimes, but there's fundamental goodwill, there's fundamental caring, there's fundamental respect, there's fundamental support. That's not going away. We can count on that as well. And so, as I finish here, and then I want to open it up to uh, your own comments and your own questions and you know, so forth. Um, in this time of loss, in addition to turning to um, conditions and events and experiences and appreciating what we can gain from them, which is more important than ever in a time of falling away, a time of loss. In addition to that, we can really help ourselves rest more and more and more, at least in the background of our experiences, in the background wallpaper of our consciousness. We can rest more and more in a sense of awareness itself, spaciousness, vastness, and stillness as, an inher as inherent aspects, as well as we can rest in a sense of peace, contentment, and love as inherent aspects of who we always are. So I want to open it up now to people who might like to offer a comment. And if I don't call on you, it's, it's not because I, I don't like you. Uh, and uh, what I'm going to do is move through the screens here. And uh, if someone has a comment, you can just raise your hand physically. There's a little feature in Zoom where you can push a button and it raises a hand. But So I'll, I'll move through the screens and I'll just call on people as I see them. Okay, so first off, Sheila, Sheila Merle Johnson, I'm going to unmute you. Hi there. Thanks, Sheila. Uh, it's actually Sheila Merle. Sheila Merle. So you, one of the gains, this is ironic to me, one of the gains for me of this time is being able to do meditation with you. I live 15 minutes away from Dominica, but I would just somehow either not go or it would... Um, clash with improv and now with you doing it earlier yeah i mean you're one of the many meditation things i get to do this has been such a spiritual time for me the time that i was giving away to other outside activities i now mm. am coming in and thank you for that oh sheila merle thank you i appreciate that Okay, so it's not personal. I'm going to mute you again and then yes, yes. move around a bit. Okay, great. So Madison, hi Madison, I'm unmuting you. Great. So, oh Madison, you're sorry. I'm I pushed the button, but it takes a minute for it to work. Now you're unmuted. Hi Madison. Hi Rick. What a joy. And I don't live 15 minutes from Dominican, so it's the first time I've been to the Wednesday meeting and. It's great to see you. Um, I was listening carefully, even as I was eating my salad. And um, I feel like it's very hard for me often to get in touch with that. Underneath it all, there's this base of peacefulness. Yeah. And um, you said something that hit the spot and I just wanted to quote on it because it's been a moment of pain and I'll tell you how I dealt with it. You said you can't escape the results of your own actions. And I've been kind of snarky in emails and I um, ended up cutting off the source of 80% of my income through my snarkiness. And um, periodically throughout the day, I just burst into tears. Um, what I did 
that was really helpful was somebody told me last night after going to meditation and doing some other things to list every darn fear I had and stick it in a box, like a God box. And I did that. And yeah. then I um, did something that I don't think you guys approve of. I pulled some tarot cards, which I almost never do. No disapproval. And- <laughs> no disapproval. <laughs> and what I saw in the cards was this, like, just keep with your fiery effort and you're going to be okay. You'll, you'll just That's resume. good. And I really needed that. And then today, I just said, no matter what, you're going to stick with a schedule, um, a class to do, a meeting, a person to talk to. And it's really helped. And it's been very unglamorous stuff. But I'm, I'm still in shock. And I had never heard that phrase that we can't escape or we thought we could escape yeah. the results of our own actions and um if you yeah. had more to say on that i I'd, I'd really love it and i'm i'm trying really now to yeah. to come to peace with it not go to self-hatred not go to self-pity and yeah. just um swing in there well good for you madison and let me speak to that if i could and i'll be brief just to make sure we have as much time for everyone as possible by the way people have been uh, offering comments in the chat, including some suggestions for how we do this. Um, uh, and I appreciate those. We will take them into account. Uh, going forward, we will likely set up a situation where groups can form after the formal ending, say at, at half past the hour when we'll, when we'll finish. And then you can form little groups and including we'll find ways, hopefully, for people to form groups with those that they know. So I'm gonna mute you now, Madison. Um, yeah. Speak briefly to this. So uh, one of the things that is um, really good to appreciate is we also, I mean, we in, we in, yep. Okay, so um, two things. One, a definition of karma that I found really amusing comes from Stephen Gaskin, who taught a class called the Monday Night Class in, in San Francisco in the 60s, maybe 70s. And he said, karma is like hitting golf balls in a shower. All right, uh, so we're, acting, whoop, and then whoop, the ball comes back, for better or worse. A little detail, sometimes other people have hit a ball in the shower and we uh, rush in to catch the ball and uh, maybe after a while we should just sort of let it go by and let there be a natural you know, learning for that person, uh, let's say. Uh, but in any case, we hit balls in the shower and we hit different kinds of balls. Uh, and uh, one of the balls we hit in the shower is our own practice we do inherit the results of our practice, right? Which is great. We can, um, we can do more with our own practice, right? When we practice today, including ways that we physically change our body, notably its brain, uh, through our own practices. And that can be inspiring to us um, to keep on going. So that's, I think, something to really appreciate. The other side of it is to face the the things that we've done that we have to live with, and some of them are irrevocable. And to appreciate that, to use a metaphor, if we are like a pond in our nature, the things that we have to deal with are like ripples on the surface of the pond. They pattern the pond. They are an eddy in the stream of the pond. Okay. But what we can do, even as we face shame for things we've done or remorse, or we just face the sadness of roads not taken or uh, too late now, or that person will not repair with us or whatever it might be, um, you know, that is just part of the whole. It's never the whole. The whole is the whole. The whole is the whole of consciousness opening into everything. And it's really, for me, it's such, it changes everything when we experience being the whole in which sorrow or remorse or regret or disappointment pass. And we're not suppressing the sorrow or disappointment. We're not trying to stop any ripple moving over the surface of the pond. We're simply exploring what it's like to abide as the pond as a whole 
which as a whole is stable, isn't it? And we can take refuge in it. And for me, this is not abstract or esoteric. It's, it's practice. It's being the whole of it all. You know, um, opening into everything and, and feeling everything rippling back through us as us. Okay. And it helps to uh, learn the lesson, you know, as uh, Suzuki Roshi put it, you're perfect as you are. And you could lose a little improvement. <laughs> so, okay. I'll look for another person with their hand up, maybe in a different screen. Yay, Rick, I've been wanting to call on you for a while. Hang on. So, Rick, um, great. Thanks, you're Rick. unmuted. Thank you. Um, so, a couple things. Um, um, on, the, um, on a note of gratitude um, for the gift of breath and breathing, particularly as it relates to COVID, which affects respiration. Um, you know, when folks experience that, they, you know, in some cases have to be supported with, um, with a respirator. So yeah. I, I don't know this, <laughs> uh, but just sitting here with you today and 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 this group it's it's um it's a profound thing to to be able to just breathe and to be grateful for for our breath so that's one thing the other thank thing thank you that's beautiful thank you thanks the other thing that um that i've been experiencing is as it also relates to the breath is that i um i'm sensitive to the notion of letting go and the, and the notion of, of releasing uh, particularly negative emotions. And, and I seem to associate that with an exhale. Mm. And I, yeah. I don't know, it may be unique to me. I, I, don't, I don't know. But um, I think my tendency is to focus it, um, more so on that than what you sort of in, in, um, enlightened me to this evening and it's not like you haven't talked about it before but the whole idea of sort of opening into allness and opening into a sense of everything that's happening in every moment and and so uh, what i experienced or what i noticed is that i can uh, get a sense for that on the in-breath <laughs> oh that's funny so yeah i mean i think tick not on just to step step into it there a little bit rick um Thich Nhat Hanh, I think, has these very beautiful meditations where, you know, as I sort of like I breathe in the world and I breathe out love, you know, breathe in the world, breathe out love, or things like that, maybe related to steps. So that sounds great, what you're doing there. Really interesting. Well, and it's, it's like um, instead of just kind of letting the emotion go, it's like also getting in touch with it and being willing to sort of be okay with it. Yeah, you know? that's great. That's yeah. beautiful. So, you know, he talks about it, you know, breathing in, I am home, breathing out, I am home. I mean, he has other beautiful phrases. Well, Rick, thank you. If that's okay, I'll, I'll go sure. to one more person just to try to, you know, have as many people as possible. So I'll, sorry about that, I'll mute you now. And um, Trish L, where are you, Trish? You had your hand, there you are. I'm gonna unmute you, unmuting Trish L. Great. Okay. Um, so, uh, thanks uh, so much. Your um, meditations have been a lot to me over the past years. I have many severe um, chronic uh, autoimmune diseases. Mm. And so for the past two years, I have been mostly bed bound. Yeah. And um, just in January, I started recovering and was able to go out and do things. And now I'm quarantined again. <laughs> and so, you know, I kind of look for what are the opportunities here? Yeah. And so the opportunity is to um, spend more time finding my inner peace and joy and making peace with the fact that I have no control over anything at all. Um, but one of the things I also wanted to encourage people is one of the opportunities out there is for people to connect with others who have, like me, many um, illnesses and, and we're stuck indoors and we know how to be quarantined. Like I am a master at being quarantined. <laughs> <laughs> wow so, that's you know, it's 
it's been a blessing to me that some of my friends have connected with me and said, how do you order groceries? How do you get this? How do you do this? And it has opened up these pathways of um, communication, yeah. which has been joyous for all of us. So, um, you know, there's opportunity everywhere you look, I think. And that's really beautiful. And thank you. And um, <laughs> well, I'm sure we'll figure out more ways to respect privacy while also enabling people to, you know, certainly reach out to another person who can take that invitation or not. And uh, Trish, I appreciate you saying that. And um, if you have some handy tips uh, from your from your experience about how to shelter shelter in style or something, you know, I think about the the wonderful book uh, from um, uh, Ken Wilber, "Grace and Grit," and the phrase "Grace and Grit." And obviously, Trish, you've got grace and grit here, and how the rest of us can bring some grace and grit to this process. That'd be great. Uh, I'd like to finish in a moment, if I could. Uh, uh, first, a little announcement or just an invitation. Uh, if you know other people in your life who would benefit from practice in this way, uh, feel free to pass along uh, the information about these Wednesday uh, medit meditations to them. Um, uh, we, you know, I think it's great to have more people involved. And um, again, when everything was kind of sunny and easy, we could, as a band, as a human tribe, we could get away with a lot of stuff. These days, we really need to support each other and to pull in support. So if you wanna just you know, let other people know about this, they're, they're very welcome to participate. 